Hey everybody, welcome back to the new year on The Ox and the Rat. I'm your host, The Ox. And I'm the Rat. How are things in your part of the world? My part of the world is doing okay. We're getting a few flare-ups on the old COVID, but hmm. uh, isn't everybody, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't We don't hear much from... I, I don't hear much from that part of the world. Is it like... Is it like the nightmare situation it is in, in Canada and North America that everybody's talking about? Not really. It's only a few cases, but a few leads to more. So they're trying to clamp down a lot here, I guess, in the in the specific areas, locking down people. So Yeah. Um, well, here it's like the apocalypse, if you listen to the news. We're... <laughs> I love this one. We're we're going to go into our, our second lockdown officially as of yesterday. And I was like, when were we not in a lockdown already? But uh, <coughs> we're going to follow up the first lockdown with another lockdown. And this lockdown is even more sig- more significant than the last lockdown. I'm like, what else could you possibly take away? I can't even get my hair cut. So, hmm. yeah. And in, and in Quebec, you know, like they're uh, they have the police out. Try, tried to keep people under quarantine and fining them. Some lady, I think it was in Quebec, I think it was a joke, but a couple, so not a lady, but a couple went out walking, like, I don't know, I didn't read into it, it was just so absurd, were fined because the the wife, I guess it was a wife, was walking her husband like a dog <laughs> to, to get around, like, the restrictions, right? <laughs> but they got fined anyways. <laughs> I mean... It just it's just crazy. Just insane. He needs his exercise. Yeah, yeah. I man, that's a good point, man. We all need fucking exercise. I was just doing mine, but uh it's getting challenging, especially with the cold. You can't go out and, you know, drop drop deadlifts and stuff like I could with my Olympic bar. So <coughs> it's uh kettlebells all day and day and uh, you know, some calisthenics and stuff, but not quite the same. I like that big, that heavy load feeling once in a while. I miss that. Heavy load. Um, so what's going on with you? With me, with me yeah. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got COVID. I don't know. I had to, I got, I was sick twice in 10 days, which is weird considering, you know, I just don't get sick. And it was mm-hmm. the same kind of illness. Uh, which is why these episodes have been a little bit more sporadic, but like it was like muscle aches, pretty severe, like fall in into a headache sort of a thing, chills, like 24 hour ish that bit and then gone. But the second time, I think I was uh, Friday, Friday, out of nowhere, just completely out of nowhere. Um, the whole chills thing started up, but it was preceded by a cough and I felt great that day it was very strange and preceded by a cough and then the cough just wouldn't go away it's still with me um i have a little bit of tightness in my chest and it's just like just annoying because i can't i can't take deep deep breaths um obviously i can say more than one word at a time (coughs) but there it is um it's just this lingering sort of dry cough that sticks with me and uh i could feel it toning down going away Not really different from other flus I've felt in the past. But uh, so I decided to go get tested on Monday. And that was weird. That is very uncomfortable shoving that thing up your nose. Mm. (laughs) It goes really far back there. I'm surprised I didn't sneeze. (laughs) I'd like you're aware of the situation. That's hard. You're like, I don't want to sneeze if I do have it all over this lady (laughs) who's shoving the thing up my nose. Uh, I I held it in and... uh, Anyways, still waiting on the results, and it just couldn't come at a worse time because, of course, I'm supposed to move in a few days. Big deal. That's just overshadowed by this nightmare situation because if it comes back positive, you know, that I can't go anywhere. I can't talk to anybody, people I know, my partner, everyone, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Everybody has to self-quarantine, go get tested. Like, fuck. (laughs) It's just ridiculous my parents too of course Ugh. It, you know i'm i feel pretty good i'm i'm worried about the like the 
the cough is annoying and a little bit concerning. But, uh, you know, if this is it, then I guess so be it. Let's let's get this crap over with. Because <laughs> uh, there's another one around the corner, right? There's there's the new UK version of the virus, you know, there's a thousand flavors of COVID, which is why I'm so super skeptical, skeptical about this vaccine. And then yesterday I'm reading about, like, there's a new... <laughs> The new viruses that, like, that people are really concerned about. Like, oh, well, I don't know how much further we can go in responding to something. Like, this thing has, like, a what? Uh, 0.2 or, like, 1 per... I don't know. I can't remember the, the actual fatality and or hospitalization rates. And I'm reading about something with... Uh, it's always concerning when you see a bat. You know, those terrible bat... Look, bats are scary. Fucking weird, uh, like a like a scientist holding up a bat and then talking about a disease below it. So it's like seventy five percent mortality. Like oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> like might as well just give up. Man. Um, yeah. Do we need those things? Could we get rid of them? Bats? Well, they're they're quite important for the ecosystem. Did you, did you know, no, know that the number the number one source of I believe it's phosphorus? Phosphorus? Guano. Ammonia. Yeah, for fertilizer was guano prior to um, the develop the development of artificial fertilizer or ammonia from atmospheric something by Fritz Haber. Yeah, something or like Faber. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which of course led to the de development of artificial chemicals for uh, for explosives. That's the Faber company, IG Faber in uh, in Germany. No, here's just prior to World War One. Here's a thought: like those people, I heard those people would get sick a lot because they're basically just nearby bats all the time, right? Um, <clears throat> I wonder if some of these modern colds and whatnot developed from that. What do you mean from what? From those like workers and stuff that were getting the guano. Oh yeah, maybe. Who knows, right? I mean, it's 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 contact over time. It it's it's really again, it's anything that's not. This is the way we live is not uh, normal. I think that's really important to get across to everybody. In the long history of of humanity, like this is weird. This is not normal. We're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be. It's probably the wrong term, but we're not like. Being the, in this close proximity to so many people and drinking the same water, being around so many animals, certain animals, you know, uh, in, in condensed feedlots and stuff, that's what's not normal. What mm -hmm. is normal is like, you know, sort of like a nomadic rural life, somewhere in between that. You know, we're not supposed to be around each other all the time, um, although I have no problem with it. It's just this is the this is the 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 non-normal. I think we've lost that because we have a, a horizon issue, right? Our perspective only goes back like you know as far as we're taught in history, and everything we hear about in history is agriculture is good. That's what we know. That's when people started writing and living together, and now we're healthier than we ever have been. And it's like, no, that's not true. Actually, we were healthier before we started living in agricultural settlements. It's just that we have only records from those times, right? I, I don't know. It, and it, it bothers me. Better, uh, like, higher infant mortality, so. Oh, yeah. Because so usually when, you, when people, you hear those comparisons, it's like, oh, the invention of this or that, it, you know was really was critical to saving uh people's lives yeah that's true but like that's because you're going from absolute crap in like the 1600s through to the 1800s into something better right mm -hmm. so it's like a sick user it's like a sick population bias or, or like people who you know they go from eating the standard american diet which is aka crap to you know, going vegan, and they're like, oh, I'm so much healthier. Like, of course you are. <laughs> it's not what you're adding, it's what you've taken out, right? So, mm -hmm. at infant mortality rates were, were, were worse in cities in the 1800s 
than they were in rural communities. And that's not surprising. And it's very good that all these things have been developed you know, penicillin, etc. But now there's a cost associated, right? We've got super freaking viruses. I got a question. What's your uh, most look forward to tech? Mm. It's going to come up. Oh, man. You're s- switching gears. Tech. What do you, what do you mean? Tech? Because tech's a, a big... Uh, well, there, a big the reason why I bring it up because there's the whatever that tech show, whatever that they have every year, but I've, I'm seeing a lot of oh. masks um, and stuff, which for me could be useful once this virus is gone because I live in a polluted area. So oh, yeah. it would be nice to have something that actually worked and was cool, fit on your face, reusable, stuff like that. So I'm looking forward yeah. to new masks. New masks, that's interesting. I think... From my end, and I, I wo- that's when I started wearing a mask when I, I lived in uh, that part of the world. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying. I'm kind of like on a tech purge. Like I'm trying. I used to be up on all of that stuff. I was on CNET all the time. That was my daily go-to. Um, checking tech news. What's the newest phone? Now I just don't really care so much. What tech do I care about? I don't know. You know what I you know what I really find interesting? Um beer like beer related technology. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I am I'm interested in and I don't have anything in particular. I'm interested in anything that allows me to control temperature for fermentation. Um and that's coming along. That's a really tough one. Cause, you know, it's easy enough to do stuff stuff at room temperature, but to get really good quality beer you have to be able to move things within a range of like say four degrees Celsius. And it really changes activity and also the end product because they produce, the yeast produce different types of alcohol, which is just a crazy thought. That's my my rabbit hole that I've been on. Otherwise, I don't know, like the only tech that really matters to me now is, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, is uh, I'm trying, like I said, I got a graphics tablet and I'm trying to use it, although it's a terrible company, just doesn't work. Uh, it's Huion, and I'm calling them out. I've been, they like none, none of what they've done, they've asked, like I said, this isn't working for a month, right? And they keep saying, oh, check these how to videos on YouTube, like, oh wow, thanks so much for pointing me in the direction of self help videos, like. Jesus Christ, that's your first start. And I was like, I've seen all of these, you dumb idiots. Try the new drivers. I've done that. And then it was, send us a video. I sent them a video. It's like, where's your video? So like, and then I, I was like, it's right here, you morons. And like, now I've got them to the point where that's, it's like, oh, the pen's not working. I was like, I fucking told you the pen isn't working, you dumb idiots. And then they're like, okay, great. Well, we'll send you a replacement unfortunately you have to pay shipping and the pe- the shipping cost is like a fifth of the of the of the cost for a christmas present i was like i'm not paying you morons give me a refund i i i hate them huion is a terrible company a terrible company and i can't stand them if if i could go back i would get a whack on you get what you pay for man whack on whack off what do you use? Um, I have a Wacom. You can get a cheap one uh, yeah. for like sixty bucks. I know. It's decent. Yeah, I know. Like they have the Wacom, the one by Wacom or whatever. I know it all. Um, it's just, just awful. I'm, I'm so, I'm so finished with this company. Um, and I was like, this is criminal. You're asking me to pay for your mistake. I don't think so. Like you're gonna pay shipping because you screwed up. Your product doesn't work. Anyways, uh, I'm not, I'm really upset about it. I still haven't been able to do it. I, it's part of my career transition. I want to get into graphic design. Well, I really was trying, wanting to get into uh, Adobe XD as a starting point, but um, yeah, it, you know, I could. Of course I can, but I'd rather have all the tools in, in front of me because I have other things on the go too. Mm-hmm. So tech, 
I want a working tab graphics <laughs> tablet. How about that? Otherwise, I don't know anything, man. I like it's very strange transition for me, but I just there's nothing I really care about. I was browsing a, a design website. It was just cool to see all the different stuff that's coming out. There's a lot of like, um, who knows how mass produced these things are going to be, but like a lot of biodegradable products or like. I don't know. There's like a little tooth flossing thing, you know, like those little plastic ones that you usually have that actually um, like take out carbon or made from carbon. I don't know. And like a growing, uh, basically a garden in your house, this like whole system. Um, yeah, lots of cool uh, environmentally friendly things coming out and a rollable phone that looks interesting too. Hmm. I think, uh, <coughs> glad you men mentioned some of those. If I'm, if I'm getting a little bit thinking about this more, um, stuff that I'm really interested in is the push towards renewable, real, true renewable energy. Um, and my big thing, I've said it before, is I would like more of an emphasis on renewable agriculture or zero or zero carbon input. Um, I think that's growing. There's a growing awareness of it. Um, and I'm hoping that that's something that's really pushed further with the new Biden administration, although you know it's not going to be. You know the solution is going to be the Beyond Burger. Ridiculous. So more monocrop agriculture. But there's a growing awareness that there's a problem. And I like, and you know, I think biodegradable, that's a big term. And I don't know how well regulated it, well regulated it is, but that's got to happen. I, mm -hmm. you, know, you know what my, my dream would be is if like, you know, on Star, Star Trek they had... Um, they they have like those things where you're like I want a coffee and it'll make a, make you a coffee right yeah I I wish I wish it was like the reverse and you just put something in there and it just deconstructs something into its atoms <laughs> so that's like oh you get twenty carbon from this and then you can just you know use that material elsewhere that would be amazing or like uh, bacteria that um, that just break down stuff like plastics plastics are a freaking nightmare man. Well, they have that they they have a bacteria that eats plastic but i imagine that like getting out yeah everywhere yeah. and it just destroys like everything that we own well it's like that Simps. it's gonna be like that simpsons episode that's what i what i'm worried about like right you get the bacteria to eat the plastic then you need some kind of special fish to eat the bacteria and then you need something else to eat that fish like i feel like that's how it's gonna go right yeah, we're going to screw it up. For sure. <laughs> For sure. If anybody can screw it up, we can. Or we will. Anyways, um, let's, do a, let's do a quick uh, a quick fable here. It's a very short one. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. This one's called The Boy and the Filberts. Now, the best of my knowledge, a filbert is a, is a hazelnut. All right, yes. so just so you're aware, talking about nuts. All right, I'm going to try my best to, to read this without coughing. A boy was given permission to put his hand into a pitcher to get some filberts, hazelnuts. But he took such a great fistful that he could not draw his hand out again. There he stood, unwilling to give up a single filbert, and yet unable to get them all out at once. Vexed and disappointed, he began to cry. My boy, said his mother, be satisfied with half the nuts you have taken, and you will easily get your hand out. Then, perhaps, you may have some more filberts some other time. Your turn. What's the moral? Don't be greedy. Ah, yeah, that's pretty close. Do not attempt too much at once. Yeah, mm. and uh, I agree with this one. Um, I think I've been guilty of that. Um, comprehensible input, right? I mean, I you can only take in so much at, at any one time. And I'm learning that as I'm working through my new language learning system with... Uh, I've gone back to French just as a another easy one to, to reference as I try these new system, this new system, and with Romanian which is going pretty well. Um, 
you've got to, it's got to be comprehensible. It's about doing things the right way, not as quickly as possible. Um, and, uh, I've definitely been guilty of, you know, overtraining myself, for example. Uh, I think a lot of people are. It's not about how much you can do. It's about how much, what you can do well. Yeah. Mm. Perhaps you can do it well later. As mother said. As mother said. Well, what do you think? I think I've read this within the last probably six years or so. This has come up at some point, this uh, fable. Um, so I, I recognized it as you started talking about it. Um, you recognize I, the Filberts? I recognize the Filbert fable. Um, Filbert fable. <laughs> I think uh, this can also go with being overwhelmed, even though it's kind of talking about it in a different way, but you know, the, f the feeling of like, ah, oh, I have too much stuff to do, but you're only, you're thinking about the whole rather than the parts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you just kind of, you know, knock off each one individually, it seems more manageable. But if you think about it as this like giant task that is impossible to complete, um, hmm. that way you can kind of, you know, have your hands stuck in the jar. Yeah. Approach matters for sure. Although I think a lot of us are, are guilty of, you know, attempting too much in a, a broader sense, you know, we're distracted and distraction costs. Like it's a huge cost. It's hard to calculate, but when it is calculated and presented to you in terms of like time on screen, for example, you know, uh, it's important to remember that we can't multitask. We don't actually multitask. What we can do is use several different inputs. Like I can listen to something and read something else, although there is a cost associated, right? Um, that's mm -hmm. possible. I cannot read two things at once. People, people do that though, right? They, they talk about, well, I was writing this and this and multitasking. I'm like, no, you're not. You're actually just switching between tasks, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if something involves an, a visual input or, you know, some kind of similar output, you are not multitasking. And people do that all the time with social networks, right? I, I am so, I, I'm so close. I said this before, I'm sure. I'm so close to just deleting Facebook. Because I'll tell you what, yesterday I, I got this, this COVID lockdown thing. I wrote and deleted two, two negative posts about it. And I was like, what is my intention here? Like, how is this going to help? Nobody cares what I think. Like, it's just for me to, to voice my opinion. And I was thinking to myself, like, am I just trying to virtue signal here or something? I don't know that I am, uh, but I was like, this doesn't serve a purpose. I wrote the whole thing. It was like a couple paragraphs and I, then I deleted it. I did this twice yesterday and then <coughs> I was scrolling through it and I was like, what am I doing? Like, what is this? Is this not giving me back anything? I'm listening to uninformed people talk about their day and their opinions about things. It's like, who fucking cares? I don't care what you did last week. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't, I don't like there's a picture of something. Uh, if the perp and, and when it comes down to it and people say the essential importance of Facebook is like, it seems to be like, well, I got to keep in touch with people. Like, I, why don't you talk to them? Like, I, I just want to spy on them. Exactly. Hey, freaking exactly. It's, it's well established. And, and it, it, I get these, I don't know if you feel it. I'm just becoming more and more aware. Reading this book, Think Like a Monk, too, by Jay Shetty. And he's talking about like how these, where influences come from. I was aware of this before. I'm just getting super, maybe I'm just more and more sensitized to it. It's like, how is this making me feel? And I noticed that my, my, my feelings from Facebook are either guilt shame uh what's what's that word when i'm jealousy 
um, whatever you want to call FOMO. It's some kind of like combination of all those feelings, right? Mm -hmm. It's never good. It's never good. It's a shithole. And yeah. it's not a pl it's not a platform for business for me. So what purpose does it serve? I don't know. And I guarantee you, nobody else is, many people, majority of people are not thinking about it too. What a waste of freaking time to make myself, I'm pay, I'm not paying money, but I'm essentially subsidizing a company to make me feel like crap. And yeah. I would distinguish certain social platforms from, from Facebook, like Instagram. I'm, I, it has a, a very heavy visual component. And if I curate my feed well, I could see, and if I really have some business ideas, so maybe that's useful. I don't know, but that's, I'm just so aware of it. And every time I'm there, it's an option cost, right? If I'm there, I am not somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I've used it probably for like four years. I don't know. Maybe maybe less than that, but just dump some pictures on there and then that's it. Um, yeah. I go on every once in a while. I'm like, what is what is this? And I just kind of like click around for like five minutes and I'm like, wow, this is weird. And then I just leave. I like Instagram because, you know, you could, if you're going to look at people's stories or whatever, it's just like you could skip it or you could just like click, click, click. You're like, okay, that's what they're doing. It's not time consuming unless you're just like endlessly scrolling but if you want to catch up with people that's a good way to see what they're doing i think if you want to just look at their lives and not talk to them <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly right you don't really want to catch up with them you just want to you just want to like uh like get your your weird dopamine fix right feel yeah. something I think it's a connection. And, it's especially if you're living in a different place, you're like, oh, that's what they're doing. Okay. But it is that's the thing, right? It's an option cost. People are really poor at understanding that concept. The idea that you that all of your choices have an impact, right? Like it goes back to our, our fable here, our Filbert fable, right? <coughs> if you when you're when you're at work and on social media, you have your, your, your hand is stuck in the cookie jar. When you're on Facebook, Instagram, you know, flipping between them, picking up your phone. I mean, picking up my phone is, is like an experience in itself, right? Like when I, when I pick it up, it's like I'm going into that phone and I'm there. Another thing I've noticed is that I hate my posture. The way that like it drags my neck down like i don't know there's so much about social media and like technology that i'm trying to to like cleanse of myself and yet i work in technology i don't know how i'm supposed to feel about that but it's a real issue and um i think people got their hands stuck in the the filbert picture you know go in there dive in if you have to and get the hell out of there but uh, yeah. re recognize it's, it always comes at a cost. Dive in there for half the time. <sighs> yeah, or frankly, start wondering why you should be there in the first place. This yeah. is this conversation right now is <laughs> like really motivating. Really motivating. Uh, I I, I want to get I want to get out. Yeah, I've wanted to delete it. I kind of want. I just want all my pictures that I put on there. Uh, for Facebook anyways, and I don't you really... You can download them. Yeah, you can. Um, and then I haven't, like I said, I haven't talked to anybody or looked at any of their pictures, so I kind of did yeah. it mainly for, like, my, my mom and stuff, but I barely, I don't even put anything on there anyway, and she's on Instagram now, so she can see what I'm doing. Yeah, and, and now that Facebook owns Instagram, are you actual, are you ever off Facebook if you delete facebook or you get rid mm. of it right because hey you notice how they've uh, that was super tricky when they they put the the chat for instagram it ha and then it became the same symbol you know that mm -mm. yeah yeah it's the same symbol as it was for facebook messenger mm. and then they called it yeah. chats i don't know if you you should be able to disconnect 
the two of them. I still have well, the I still have the old one, so I don't know. Uh-huh. I haven't updated. Um, but yeah, not not useful. And I just like you're saying with the phone and everything. I I've, I've always hated you know if you're talking to someone and oh, they dive God. in t- into the phone and then you're you're just talking talking. You're like, I know this person's not listening to me because they can't multitask like you're saying. I I can I can look at my phone and listen to a person, but I. I don't know. The majority of people that I talk to can't, it seems. Right. I mean, there's always a cost. I think that alone is a useful, is a useful, uh, like rule of thumb. I'm big into heuristics now. Keep saying rules of thumb. There's always a cost associated with your decisions, right? You know, if I choose to play a video, video games, there's some, it's a choice to do that in lieu of something else. Right. It's not like a, it's not a harmless, well, harm is the wrong term because you may derive joy from it, but it, there's a cost associated that, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing something, I'm doing this as opposed to something else. And it could be harmful for sure. Um, so there's another one. I, I'm thinking of get of selling my Xbox and I'm a gamer, man. Full life. I have been grew up with it. Bit of a loner. And uh, now we're talking. Now I'm talking about getting rid of Instagram or Facebook and and th- selling my Xbox. And uh, well, I don't know. You can always get the new one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I I don't I don't I'm and it, well, especially as I'm about to you know uh, share my life with uh, with somebody else moving in together. There's a yeah. cost. Your it, gaming days not, are done. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, it depends on the relationship and but I mean some things are just good ideas regardless. And I I think that this is giving that up. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm I'm really motivated now to get rid of Facebook. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Maybe I maybe I, I stew on this again. I think about it. Um the pictures thing is sort of like an anchor that keeps me in there. But that can't be the reason. <laughs> that can't be the reason I'm on Facebook because it holds my pictures. It's not a. It's not it's a. It's not a yeah, it's a heart. It's a. It's a. It's the cloud. It's a cloud, right? That's ridiculous. What a stupid reason. And it's cool, like having being able to talk to you or talking to somebody else because you don't really discover this stuff unless you're actually talking to people, right? Mm-hmm. I know that you have different views than I do. That's one of the things I hate about the stupid freaking lockdown. It's like, it's not the same. It's not the same being on Zoom or like, or say, sending messages to people, asynchronous communication, right? It's not conducive to a conversation. It doesn't develop new ideas. And by talking to others, being around groups of individuals with different ideas, you know, keep my hand from getting stuck in that cookie jar. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to do too much at once, even though I'm I'm pretty conscious of it. Time to get me just a few filberts so I can get my hand out. Yeah, yeah, time to make some changes. All right, we this one went a bit longer than I expected, which is always fun. But um, yeah, we're around that uh, 35 mark. So what say you? Do you agree with this fable moral? Do I mean it applies to a lot of different areas? You know, drop a few of those filberts back, or um, you know, replace them with more useful or delicious filberts. Hmm. Like, yeah, replacement with something else, right? Yeah, and that could be literally doing nothing. Mm-hmm. That might be. I think we could all gain some value from toning the noise down in this ridiculous environment. Anyways, let's. Uh, here's hoping I don't have COVID, and if I do, well, hello, COVID. You've been, yeah, you've been annoying. You've been really annoying. Um, <clears throat> yeah. All right. I agree too. Don't get your hands stuck in that cookie jar and um, or cookie jar that filbert pitcher, and uh, cut some things out. There's always an op- There's always a cost associated. Right. Cool, man. Till next time. All right. Talk to you later. Ciao.